<laughs> okay, hopefully I can cut that out. Hello, I'm Jennifer Longden, blogger for the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation, and with me today is the rolling diva, Bethany Hoppy. Hi, Bethany, how are you? Hi. Hi. Good, how are you? Good. I'm great. It's good to talk to you today. You have a lot going on. You have a lifestyle blog at raspberryvogue.com, and you're working on a new project. Can you uh, tell us the name of your new project? The name of the project, the is, the project Penhurst, is The Divas Shall Rise. Shall rise. Penhurst, The Divas Shall Rise. Great. Yes. And then uh, I've just visited your Facebook page, Penhurst okay. Okay. Divas, and yes. I have to tell you, looking at the historical pictures, have left me pretty nauseous. Can you tell us what Penhurst was? Well, Penhurst was a state school and institution that operated, that operated in East Tennessee, or not East Tennessee, I'm in Tennessee, that operated in East Pennsylvania. Um, it opened in 1908 and it did not close until 1986. Um, like many institutions across the United States, it started out with very good intentions to provide training and services for people with disabilities with basically the intention for them to gain skills to return to their communities. Unfortunately, within a very short amount of time, institutions across the United States became overcrowded. Um, services declined. Um, Rehabilitation declines, and unfortunately, with either economic war or social constructs at the time, they ended up kind of becoming a bit of a dumping ground for the people with physical and or developmental delays. It was pretty horrific. Yeah, from the pictures, that's obvious and apparent. Um, there are, uh, it looks as though just at one moment, everyone just got up and left. And left all of their possessions, left yeah, all yeah. of the equipment, everything there. I mean, there are piles of books and piles of clothing and piles yes. of old equipment. Yes, and there you, are. you visited this site. I did. I, I was exploring. Um, I, I, got I got permission, got permission with the property owners. I talked with them for about a year, so I didn't just like show up on the site. They really, they don't, they don't like that. They're very strongly advised against. Um, so we made connection and had a guided tour over Memorial Day weekend, and we took just our handheld video and camera phones, and and we just toured and had wonderful conversations with a great group of people. And um, it was mainly just to see the grounds, to see if it was feasible, and to see just basically how everybody felt about the project. Because we want to be sensitive and make sure that this is something that is not. Uh, degrading or insulting, but rather something that honors and commemorates the thousands of people with disabilities that went before us that did not have the advantages that we do have today. Um, so I just want to make sure that that was taken care of and that everything was handled in a very, very sensitive, coherent way. Right. So while you were there, I, I've read your blog, I've seen your Kickstarter page, and while you were there, you kind of had a creative epiphany and imagined this project, Penhurst, The Divas Will Rise. Can you tell us what that's going to look like, what it is you're going to accomplish with this project? Sure. sure. Um, ironically, about a year ago, I began, I was just playing around and, and doing research and, and reading up on disability history. It's, I know it's not what I do. <laughs> um, and I, I kind of stumbled across Penhurst in terms of like institutionalization. I'm originally from Pennsylvania. And I realized in my own lifetime across the state this was happening. And it was like a tip of an iceberg. The more that I read, the more that I researched, the more that I found how very, very different my experiences were compared to those um, behind the walls of institutions. Um, that combined with some of my feminist interest, when I got to the flight, I realized you know, women with disabilities are basically invisible in American history and culture. And I want to change that. I want people to see who we would have and should have been visually and uh, where we fit in uh, among the social constructs that we had in our history. Um, 
what were women with disabilities doing at the time of women getting the vote, that kind of thing. So my intention is to do a whole photo shoot depicting every era from 1908 into the future as a person with a disability um, in full period accurate clothing as well as capturing icons of female icons in American history had they been disabled. Wow, yeah, that's yeah. going to be quite a project. How long do you think it's going to take you to complete? Well, um, once the funding and everything comes through and I can collaborate everybody's schedule with the team I've coordinated, um, we're spending about a week out there. We're taking the first day or two just to map out where we want to take our pictures. And uh, right now we're working on storyboards that will go along with you know, the best logical flow of how do we do hair and makeup from this progression in our new buildings and things like that. So. That it, it's going to be really entertaining. <laughs> Great. Are you far enough along with your storyboards to sketch one of uh, one of your vignettes out for us here? Um, not that far along. Right now, it's more written outline than it is sketching, and I have folders of different modeling shots and angles and fashion history that I'm sort of taping together. So, true sketches aren't quite complete yet. Well, as I said, you know, I found the photos on your Facebook page arresting. Um, yes. There's yes. something that are going to uh, haunt me um, for several days. Easy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is there any one image that really um, uh, touches you? Um, it's hard to choose one. Uh, one of the first ones that pops into my head uh, is, if you recall, the picture of the broken braces laying in a pile. I saw that, yeah. That got me because I used to wear braces like that as a child. And I remember my mother and I wrestling in those every day before school. Um, I remember how they felt. I, I nicknamed it Charlie. <laughs> Charlie's still up in the attic, actually. Um, but to see them discarded and broken who wore them, what's the story, why, oh my gosh, I just I don't know what to think. That That's very interesting for me. The other one um, is a combo of the books in a pile because I'm, I'm an avid reader and a uh, very, very strong believer in that education is the key for women with disabilities and their own self-sustaining self-advocacy to the best of their ability. And so the pile of books Books are a soul for each, and mm -hmm. to see the pile discarded like that, or to see the broken braces, those got me. Yeah. Um, there were uh, three that really uh, stand out in my mind. The um, old box that says baby blocks on it. Yes. That just, it, it yeah. sent such a shiver. The it does. Um, the uh, grave markers that are nothing but numbers. Oh my God! Oh my God. All so, of yeah. the individuals who um, you know died unrecognized and unremembered um, for nothing more than having a disability is insane to me. And then uh, there's a picture that shows um, a couple of very um, uh, well decaying wheelchairs, but clearly from yeah. several different eras. Yes. And so yeah. I wonder what that must have been like. I can only imagine that they probably continued to use the, uh, you know, the the very very old ones even as they acquired new ones. And what that must have meant to have that kind of equipment. I, I they they I, may have. Um, I can remember my own um, children's um, hospital children experiences because I was born with disability. And I can recall the changes in chairs as we went along. And um, I also had an infant chair um, up in my head that looks very similar to some of the ones that are at my head. So, yeah, you can see the progression of time from like the traditional FDR wooden and wicker chairs to the chrome Everest and um, not of it. Not a lot of it maybe was top quality or top brand at that time. Certainly not what we have today. Right, indeed. And it was pretty standard in that era to um, 
institutionalize individuals with disabilities, right? Um, in the earlier era, yes, it was. Um, in fact, one of the things that, that really gets my attention is, you know, I was born in um, 1970. You hear that banging? I hope not. My dog is again. <laughs> it's starting to scream outside, so he's like, oh. all right. Um, I was born in 1970, and um, I'm, I'm actually still learning how things actually went for my parents. And it is either a legitimate fact or a, a great assumption that it was suggested that I might go somewhere, such as Um There were so many issues when I was born. I was born with spina bifida, where it was unexpected. We didn't have the sonograms, we didn't know. There wasn't there the wasn't treatment you, you can have, have like, like at clinics such, such as the children's hospital, hospital, children hospital in vitro and things like that. So when so a child is born with that fear of a disability like I have and several like others, others, this was one of the suggestions um, to forget, to not name, to, to not deal. And um, it, it was a coin toss. Um, I'm incredibly appreciative and grateful that I was uh, born to the family that I was and that this was not a consideration. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, that, that's the part that made me sort of feel sick to my stomach and propelled me into this because I, uh, I was out of the way from a completely different life. Yeah. You were um, 15, 16 when Pennhurst closed. Yes, I was, yes, which is very, very hard to handle because when I was 16, I was really about the football, the football game, game, I was in marching band, uh, choir, uh, active in student council. I was doing all kinds of things in a public high school. And um, there were my peers and counterparts behind the walls. So that. <laughs> That was one of the things that they, they, they should have had my life. And if I had the life that I have, I need to utilize it the best that I can. Uh, commemorate them, thank them, and bring them visually for you. Uh, if I can be their voice in any kind of way, and I will write and literally create a history that includes them, I will. Great. Let's shift to something a little bit lighter. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> Your blog, Raspberry Vote. Yes. Tell us a little bit about your current blog. Okay. Um, I'm sorry to get you up. So yes, good time to change. Are you okay? I'm good. It's just yeah, talking about this is powerful. Um, yeah, it's. I, I I still have this horrible feeling in the pit of my stomach, imagining what that life had to have been like. Um. For the lighter note, Raspberry Vogue is the antithesis of that. It's, I, I write Raspberry Vogue from a rolling duo female point of view. It's just the daily life of being a female who's in shoes and fashion and being a little bit snarky, uh, but doing it as well. So I try to try to do little mini life lessons with a humorous. Uh, kind of touch to it, you know, using my, my sarcasm. I, I kind of get in trouble a lot. <laughs> well, don't change it. I've just found your blog, and I've read, um, you know, I've kind of uh, flipped through and read several entries, and I love that snark. I love oh, that. <laughs> yeah, so you have a fan. Good. Um, good. Let's talk good. about your Kickstarter. So, okay, um, okay. where are you on that? When does it, uh, when does it end? Well, um, it actually ends Saturday, July 6th. Wow. And so I have got days to go. <laughs> All right. And, and how are you coming so far? Um, <laughs> financially, it's, there's a long, long way to go. And I, I just did a Facebook page today that I believe in miracles. Because <laughs> I do. Um, it, it's a long way. It's a lot to ask from crowdsourcing and individuals. And um, I am proud to say that many, if not most, of the contributors to the Kickstarter have been women with disabilities. And I just think that speaks volumes. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about who the demographic is standing up and saying, oh, yeah, go, do. 
Um, uh, but it's done in about six days. But if, if the financial goal is not met, I'm just going to shift things over and continue to fundraise and keep corporate sponsors. I am going to make this work happen. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. It sounds like an exciting project. I love seeing your um, uh, your Kickstarter video, and I know that there is a longer video on YouTube. And for our uh, Reeve folks, I'm going to link both of those onto okay, okay. the Reeve page, onto paralysis.org, on my blog post for this. Thanks. But um, tell folks, in case they just stumble across this video on YouTube without any connection to our blogs, why don't you give out um, the best contact information for reaching your blog and learning more about the project? Okay. okay. Um, to get a hold of the blog, you just go to www.raspberryvo.com. Mm -hmm. um, or all of these are accessible from my website, stephanie-coffee.com. Um, did you say the Kickstarter video? Uh, yeah, we'll put those, we'll link those. And then you also have a Facebook page for um, I do. Penhurst Divas. I do. Right? Um, on Facebook, you can go to Penhurst Divas. Um, mm -hmm. There's also a Raspberry Vogue presence on Facebook. And um, I'm always interested in talking with people on Facebook with my own. Um, so just look me up there. I'm always talking and chatting with people. Um, Great. If they do see the longer video on YouTube, that goes with my YouTube channel, Rolling Diva channel. So that's, that's available to subscribe to as well. Fantastic. And you also have a book on Amazon, a children's book that you wrote. Yeah, that was actually my first Kickstarter. All right, why don't you give us the name of the book? Okay, Molly Bagali's Wonderful Dancing Debut. And I did see it on Amazon. It looks like a great book. I'm looking Thank forward you. to seeing it myself. So, um, Bethany, I really enjoyed you taking time to talk to us. Bethany Hoppy, The Rolling Diva, uh, RaspberryVogue.com, and creator of the Kickstarter project, Penhurst, The Divas Shall Rise. Thanks yes. so much, yes. Bethany. Thank you, Jennifer. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.